You know, son, I'm a fairly careless man. It's true. And I suppose careless men shouldn't be holding the keys to the only cell here in Usher. But here I am. I suspect a man could walk straight out of here one day, and I'd be none the wiser for it. Of course, I also suspect I'd never see that man again. At least not till he could prove to be a decent man. Nope. He'd be far and gone. Forever. And if he ever did show himself in this town again, and I was still the law, well, he'd be cracking rocks for some time to come. So I'm warning you. Take this chance. Because a boy like you he ain't gonna have many more. Here's us, we're both out of here. Jeez. Something big chasing you. You running, son? Just looking to get some sleep, that's all, mister. Well, you gotta have more business out here than just sleeping. None that I'd care to share with you. Well, sorry I didn't mean nothing by it. I just wanted to introduce myself. Name's Lucas, Emmett Lucas. Owen. Well, Owen, where are you heading? Family, friends out here? Oh, I see. It's just more to confess yourself to nature, eh? Look, mister. I just came here to get some sleep, that's all. I didn't come to make new friends. I just found some sleep. That's all. It's all right. Not much for talking, eh? It's okay. You don't have to. I can... Do plenty for both of us. You get your rest and we'll talk more tomorrow. Night over.
you look cold, you're going, well, this is no place to camp in the winter. There's an old house, not far. Just get you there and get some food in you. You hungry? Free man should always eat like a king. What makes you think I'm a free man? Well, what do you know? Boy's got a sordid past. No. Not exactly running. More like expelled from Usher. Sheriff turned his back on me and said don't look back. So I ain't gonna... What are you gonna do out here, Owen? I'm just looking to survive the winter. I was just looking to take a short escape myself. Some odd years ago now. We're all just looking to survive out here. We're all looking for something else too, though. Looking for salvation from ourselves. We all got our cross to bear. I had a dream once, where I died out here, alone and unburied, picked apart by animals and nature. It was terrifying to see how unimportant a man's life can seem when his death is so inconsequential. There's nothing exactly keeping you out here. I mean, why don't you just go home? I got my own ghost in Usher. I lived there with my wife, Celia. Must be a dozen years ago now. I just couldn't stand feeling alone in a crowd of people. I'd rather be alone in a lonely place. Guess I just wanted to get away from all that. It's clear out here and there aren't any set directions or paths to follow. But you can't forget your past so easily out here. These hills can become a harsh reminder. Like I said last night, old man, I got nothing to confess to you or these hills. I'm a free man out here. So, we've been knowing each other long enough to be calling each other friend. Well, it takes a split second to know whether a man's your friend or not. Maybe, but a friend is something more than someone who's going to be talking your ear off all day long. Friend is someone who's willing to watch your back, make sacrifices for you. I'd venture to say that Sheriff and Usher made a mighty friendly gesture letting you walk away. Wasn't his sacrifice enough to make him your friend? <laughs> that friend has a chain gang in mind for me, should I ever choose to pay him a visit. But it ain't your concern anyway. Because tomorrow, you ain't going with me. Fair enough, I want. Till morning then.
supposed to be navigating this trip. Navigate to where? I'm just waiting until the path splits off and I'm going my own way. Oh, hell. What are you doing out here if you don't even know what path to take? Doesn't matter which path I take as long as it's not the same as yours. Twelve years is a long time to be alone out here. So why don't you go back to your wife? And Usher? No, she passed on about the same time I left Usher. She was a good woman. The rainy day goes by, I don't miss the hell out of her. But when my time comes, we'll be together again. And I can only hope my actions in this life don't keep me away from her. Oh, so it's you that's running from their past. <laughs> <laughs> not, not exactly running, no. I was employed at the time as a lumberjack up north. Far from Usher and far from Celia. Money was tight, jobs were scarce. I had a friend who could get me on in the timber business. Four months I was in those woods while Celia waited in good faith at home. Months wore on and the season changed to cold. Fever spread through most of Usher. I received word through telegram Celia had taken ill. I rode for three days. They were slowing for the cold at night, and they rode that horse dead. By the time I reached Usher, air was stale in my home, and Celia was cold to the ground. I got my resting place marked out beside her, and when I'm laid there, she'll know I'm a part of her again. Well... Young sir, it seems we've reached the end of this trail and uh, you missed all the forks. <laughs> it's gonna be dark soon. We should make camp while there's still light. Yeah, but I thought you said that it was too cold out this time of year to sleep somewhere where there's no shelter. What are we doing out here anyway? There's no squats for another mile or so. <coughs> too dark to make it that far. We're better off here for just one night. <laughs> you seem, uh, you seem awful quiet tonight. I mean, normally I should thank you for the silence, but... I'm actually kind of spooked. I don't, just, I don't feel too well tonight. I must have picked up a bug out in the trail. Why don't, why don't you move closer to the fire then, so uh, you keep warm? I survive colder nights than this. <laughs> That's what it's all about, eh? Surviving. Well, you've been out here for 12 years. <laughs> Don't you think it's time for you to go home? <laughs> what the hell's got you so preachy tonight? <coughs> Besides, the hell do you know about it anyway? <coughs> well, you talk a pretty blue streak. It's kind of hard for that to all go by and not pick any of it up. This is a place of reflection, of confession. We've created the limbo here between our past regrets and our fears for the future. And it's a safe place because there's nothing going on out here. There's nothing going on out here, Emmett. <laughs> What's worse <laughs> is you meet strange old men who fill your head full of superstition and nonsense until you're talking a blue streak of your own. <laughs> I think what you said is honest at least. You're right, I <laughs> I should come to grips with my demons. So should you, Owen. Maybe it's time we both went home. I can't go home. 
these the hills are my home. At least as long as the law is my friend. Well, I can't leave you alone. Not until I've at least shown you a few more places to put up for the night. I told you a million times, Emmett, I can do it on my own. I don't need your help. Well, thanks anyway. <laughs> what was that? What am I hearing from this young outlaw? I don't know what's got into you tonight, boy. But <laughs> you are sprouting goodness like a prairie flower. It ain't goodness. It's the man's pride, that's all. I'm a proud man. I'll make my own way. Do it on my own. I just, just want to thank you. Oh, uh, hell, you don't even, you don't even need to say it. <laughs> I've enjoyed your company immensely. Thank you. Well, I, I guess you'll be going again in the morning. I hope to see you around if I ever make it. <laughs> Back out to this place. You've been a good friend, old. Night, Emmett. <clears throat> Hey, wake up, Emmett. Let's go, come on, I'll walk with you for a while. Come on, Emmett. Wake up. Thank you.